Even in today's golden age of television, HBO's mob series The Sopranos is still often heralded as one of the best TV shows of all time. Debuting in 1999, The Sopranos would go on to air for six seasons, totaling 86 episodes, and remains a household name. In celebration of the prequel movie to the show, Newark, featuring Michael Gandolfini in the role his father James made famous, Tony Soprano, here are 40 interesting facts and trivia about the movie. Number 1. James Gandolfini said that he was often contacted by real-life mobsters who complimented him on the series' authenticity. They also gave him advice on his portrayal of Tony Soprano, the most famous of which is a wise guy telling Gandolfini shortly after the airing of the show's pilot not to wear shorts again. This was seemingly incorporated into the first episode of season 4 when New York City mob boss Carmine Lupertazzi, after hearing about a backyard party that Tony had, tells him, a Don doesn't wear shorts. Number 2. The series was so authentic and realistic that four members of the D. Cavalcante's crime family, the only real-life New Jersey mob family at the time, were secretly tape-recorded by the FBI in 1999, where they were talking about the show, and were noting the similarities between their family and the fictional De Mio soprano crime family. One mobster is quoted as saying, is this supposed to be us? And another replies, you are in there, they mention your name in there. Number 3. James Gandolfini is the only actor in the show to appear in every episode. Number 4. The nickname of Tony's uncle, Corrado Soprano, is Junior in the show. This nickname was taken from the actual nickname of Tony Sirico, who plays Paul in the show, from the days where he was an actual gangster before his acting days. Number 5. It is reported that James Gandolfini, in order to elicit the rage and frustration that his character Tony feels, often, inserted a small stone into his shoe in some scenes to irritate him. Number 6. A salary dispute occurred after the fourth season of the show, which was solved when James Gandolfini gave each of the main cast member just over $33,000 of his own money. Number 7. For the therapist scenes in Dr. Melfi's office between Melfi and Tony, Sopranos creator David Chase had one rule for the show's directors, no camera movements. Number 8. Tony Sirico, as mentioned, was a mobster before he became an actor. He said he had served jail time and he apparently has been arrested at least 28 times. He only agreed to play a part in the show if the showmakers agreed that his character Paulie would never become a rat or an informant. Number 9. The Sopranos had little to no improvisation on set, as the actors were instructed to strictly follow the script. Any changes or ideas actors had were discussed with David Chase beforehand. Number 10. Lorraine Bracco was originally wanted for the role of Tony Soprano's wife, Carmela Soprano, but she rejected it as the part was too similar to her role in Goodfellas. She was more interested in the role of Dr. Melfi, which she felt would be more of a challenge. Interestingly, at one point, Ray Liotta was offered the role of Tony Soprano, who turned it down because he did not want to commit to a TV series. Had the two accepted their original offers, they would both be playing husband and wife again after Goodfellas, a film which was a primary influence on The Sopranos. Number 11. Originally, HBO feared that the title, The Sopranos, would make audiences think the show was about music. Jamie Lynn Sigler, who plays Meadow, actually thought the show was about opera singers when she auditioned. As such, HBO added the gun in the title logo. Other names for the series were also considered, such as Made in New Jersey. Number 12. David Chase directed two episodes, the first and the last. Number 13. The opening credits of the first three seasons are actually slightly different from the rest, in that there is a shot of the World Trade Center visible in Tony's rearview mirror, which was removed after 9-11. Number 14. Pine Barrens, a fan-favorite episode, the one where Christopher and Paul get lost in the woods, was directed by Steve Buscemi, who would later appear on the show as Tony Soprano's cousin, Tony B. Number 15. Lillo Brancato Jr., who played Matthew Bellavaca, was involved in a home invasion burglary in 2005 in which Brancato's friend killed an off-duty police officer who had seen them. Brancato was sentenced to 10 years in prison in 2009, but has since been released in 2013 for good behaviour. Number 16. Whenever an actor would go to Chase and complain about things in the script, saying that their character would not do this or do that, he reportedly would shut them down by saying, Who told you it is your character? Number 17. 
Stephen Van Zandt, who plays Silvio, had his character's suits made by the same tailor of real-life mob boss John Gotti, who was serving a life sentence at the time. Number 18. Tim Van Patten directed most of the episodes. 20 out of 86. He received four Emmy nominations. Number 19. Adjusted for fluctuation based on Tony's gambling problems, his worth was roughly $5 to $6 million. Number 20. Tony Sirico and Frank Vincent originally both auditioned for the role of Uncle Junior. Number 21. Despite the show's incredible success and popularity, two of the greatest mob movie directors, Francis Ford Coppola and Martin Scorsese, expressed less than favourable opinions of the show. Scorsese, whilst promoting the show Boardwalk Empire, which he produced, said, I don't have time to watch any other shows, the famous ones. I've seen a few episodes of some, in fact. I've only watched The Sopranos once or twice. I just couldn't connect with it. And Coppola simply stated, I never saw The Sopranos. I'm not interested in the mob. Number 22. The relationship between Olivia Soprano and her son Tony Soprano is based on David Chase's relationship with his own mother. Number 23. Originally, The Sopranos was pitched as a feature-length film by David Chase. Number 24. The Sopranos contains a vast amount of actors who appeared in Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas. Five of the regular cast members appeared in Goodfellas. Lauren Bracco, Mark Lemporioli, Tony Sirico, Vincent Pastore and Frank Vincent. Ten recurring cast members also appeared in the movie. Nicole Bordetti, Tony Darrow, Tony Lip, Frank Pellegrino, John Siakia, Susan Shepard, Paul Herman, Mariana Leone, Daniel P. Conte and Frank Albanese. Eleven one-time guest stars also appeared in the movie. Nancy Cassaro, Anthony Casso, who is the guy who plays Martin Scorsese, Chuck Lowe, Tobin Bell, Gene Canfield, Jaytano, Lowe Guidis, Vito, Antua Fermo, Frank Adnois, Anthony Alexandro, Victor Colicchio, and Angela Pietro Pinto. Supposedly, Joseph R. Ganascoli was an extra in the movie, but this has not been verified. Number 25. The total body count of the series is 92. Number 26. The Sopranos, like the movie Goodfellas, which heavily inspired it, is known for having actors who are or have been real-life criminals. One example is the case of Anthony Borghese, who played Larry Barese, where he was caught going to members of the Gambino crime family to help him collect a $5,000 debt and arrange a beating that left a man seriously injured with a broken jaw and ribs. He pleaded guilty but avoided jail time by making a plea deal, which involved making a public service announcement film about the dangers of dealing with organised crime members. Number 27. David Chase has said that if the pilot of the show had not been picked up and greenlit for a season, he would have shot another hour's worth of material and released it as a movie, with the film ending with Tony panicking when attempting to kill his mother with a pillow. Number 28. In January 2000, the Coalition of Italian-American Associations issued a joint statement condemning the show for perpetrating a negative stereotype of Italian-Americans. This may have influenced an episode where Dr. Melfi has dinner with her family and they discuss the negative influence of movies stereotyping Italian-Americans as criminals. Number 29. One of the major plot lines planned for season 3 was Tony attempting to prevent his mother from testifying against him in court. However, these plans had to be scrapped and the season revised after Nancy Marchand's death, who played Livia Soprano. Her final scene in the show was a combination of previous footage and outtakes, with CGI used to put her head on another actress's body. Number 30. Drea Di Matteo, who played Adriana, was completely unaware that her character would be killed off and written out of the series until she read the script before the episode's shoot. Number 31. The Adriana hit is thought to have been inspired by the real-life hit of Teresa Ferrero in 1979, who was the girlfriend of a mobster who became a government informant after being caught selling drugs. Interestingly, the mobster she was a mistress for was Tommy De Simone, the inspiration for Joe Pesci's character in Goodfellas, Tommy DeVito. Number 32. Reportedly, David Chase had a furious temper on set, and crew members were anxious not to upset him during shooting. In a 2013 GQ article by Brett Martin, Chase's behaviour is described as temperamental and sarcastic. Number 33. 
Robert Ehler, who plays Anthony Jr., was arrested in 2001 during the run of season 3 for robbery. Though Ehler would plead not guilty, he was charged along with two other teenagers and could have faced up to 15 years in prison as his two victims said that the four had ganged up on them and demanded money. Aya did not serve any prison time as he agreed to a plea deal and HBO has never commented on the incident. Number 34. At one point during filming in 2002, James Gandolfini went missing, not showing up for shooting for four days, sending producers into panic mode. Gandolfini suffered from many problems during filming, including drug abuse and a divorce, and this may have been what led him to going off the grid. He eventually called production requesting a car to come pick him up. Though he had his issues, many of his fellow co-stars insist he was an incredible co-worker and a wonderful man to be around. Number 35. The Sopranos opening with the song Wake Up This Morning is considered iconic, but originally may have been very different, as David Chase wanted each episode to open with a different song. HBO rejected this idea, and a compromise was made by each episode ending with a different song. Number 36. In earlier seasons, Steve Schirripa, who played Bobby Bacala, wore a fat suit, but was not required to wear one during later seasons. The actor figured that the reason was that he had gotten so fat in real life that he didn't need one. Number 37. In season 4, during Christopher's intervention, he says to Tony that he'll die of a heart attack at the age of 50. In real life, James Gandolfini really did die of a heart attack at the age of 51. Number 38. In the Bada Bing strip club, there is a large mugshot hanging where mobsters hang out. This is interestingly a photo of Frank Sinatra, who was arrested at the age of 23 in 1938. Number 39. The character of Dr. Melfi is based on Chase's own therapist, Lorraine Kaufman. Chase said that she had the same way of cutting through your bullshit. As the series went on, Kaufman became involved with the character's psychological development, even writing a breakdown of the Sopranos family. Chase has said that Kaufman predicted many of the behaviours that the fictional characters would go on to exhibit. And finally, number 40. In order to protect the secrecy of the show and to provide different plot options during editing, many different versions of scenes were filmed, including one where Adriana suspects something fishy is up when Tony arranges for her to be picked up and she instead drives away, instead of being killed by Silvio. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe and hit the notification button for more videos. And thanks for watching.